Hey folks, it's Matt Eland. This week, .NET 7 and C Sharp 11 were released and we got some new toys to play with. I want to talk to you about the required keyword, which is new in C Sharp 11, and show you what it does for us and how it might help you. Okay, so let's take a look at some code here. So here I have Visual Studio 17.4.0, uh, uh, and you're going to need this version or greater in order to have access to .NET 7 and C Sharp 11. So I have a console application here, uh, and one of the important settings on this is I have the target framework here set to .NET 7. So you need to have .NET 7 uh, set as your target framework. Uh, .NET 6 or below will not work for you uh, for using the required keyboard. Okay, um, But here I have a plain old program.cs file that has a mix of code. Right now it's just an article class. This article class has a couple of required properties. That's the title and author, as well as an optional string uh, property called the subtitle. It has a pair of constructors, one that requires in a title, subtitle, and author, and one that just takes in the title and author. And we might declare this, uh, this article right now by saying article, article equals new article. And we might say, uh, this is C sharp 11 required keyword by Matt Eland, and I might not choose to give it a subtitle. Now, we know that by the time line one executes that the title and author properties are going to have non-null values. We know that the subtitle is probably going to have a null value in this case. If I wanted to give it a subtitle, I could add, use the other constructor parameter here. I could say some subtitle. Okay, so this is how we might traditionally uh, create an object. Now, we could simplify this a little bit by using the target type new keyword uh, introduced in C-sharp 9, and that simplifies things a little bit because I'm only saying article once on the left. But some people have started to not like these custom constructors, and so they might not be might li not like all the boilerplate code entailed in the constructor, so they want to try to get rid of those if possible. Well, we can do those right now, and we can get rid of these constructor parameters and we can use these little inline initializers here. So I can say uh, title is equal to C sharp 11 required keyword, which is not present yet in this code, by the way, in case you were wondering. Author is gonna be myself, and I can set a subtitle if I want to or if I don't, okay? So in this case, I know that by the end of line five, my article is gonna have a title and author set, uh, so it should validate those, pro those, those properties. But I notice I still have some green squigglies here. It says, hey, there's a possibility that the title must contain might, might not contain a non-null value. Well, in this particular case, it does. But if I was going to create another article, I'll set it equal to new. And I'll set the author to myself. But I'm going to conveniently forget to set the title of that article. So this is valid C sharp code. Okay? This is valid C sharp code as of C sharp 10 and below, and this will create two different articles. Now this another article, when I run it, it's actually going to have a null value for the title, even though this title property is declared as non-nullable. Okay? So this is what this the CS8618 uh, is complaining about. Now, the required keyword is a new keyword we can add to our properties. And the tooling is still catching up a little bit with some of these new language features. It's trying to complete the required attribute there, and so just the required keyword, that's okay. It'll get better over time. But here we have this required keyword here, along with title and author. And what this is doing for us is it's, the compiler is now able to enforce, like, hey, you're creating an article here, but you're never actually setting the title here. So because I have this required attribute on the title, even though I'm using this object initializer, it's telling me, like, Matt, you're not, you're not setting the title. It's okay with me not setting the subtitle because that that's allows uh, nullables. But here, the compiler is forcing me to uh, set all the required properties. So if you don't like constructors, if you think constructors are a little boilerplate, uh, this is going to be a decent fix for you for that behavior. You can use the default constructor, which is the one that's automatically generated, looks like this. And you can use the inline initializers uh, up here, and you're going to be just fine. 
So I, I think this is an interesting feature. I'm not sure how much I'm personally going to be using this. Uh, I still tend to think in terms of constructors and constructors can help me understand the properties I have to put in. But if you don't like the restrictiveness of constructors, if you don't like the boilerplate of constructors, you can potentially just rely on default constructors for many of your own classes and the required keyword for properties to make sure that the required values are set. Okay. So it's an interesting addition to the language. You don't have to use it. You may start seeing it around more and more. Uh, let me know what you think. I'm curious if you like it, if you don't like it, if you're going to use it or ignore it. Uh, but uh, that's the required keyword. Kind of cool.